Um, it's very cold. In fact, I'll show you here. It's probably 23 or 4 centigrade in this room, 23. I'll dip it in the LNG and you'll see it rapidly drop. It's a cryogenic, which means we mechanically have to cool the gas to make it a liquid. It wants to be a gas. But uh, you'll see it rapidly drop down and it's going to stop somewhere around minus 162. It's a little warmer batch. And then you'll see when I remove this, it'll flash down another couple of degrees. That was minus 159, minus 164. So it's very cold. People ask me if I can touch it. I can, in fact. Um, can you come up here, please, ma'am? <laughs> come around this side. You, you had fear in your eyes. Before you touch it, please. Um, I protect myself against cryogenics for several reasons. Before you touch it, I'll show you why. Um, normally, it's a very flexible rose. And uh, if you cool it down just a little, you'll see why we just touch it quickly. You'll see that it loses its flexibility, sort of. So I just want you to touch it for a second. <laughs> <laughs> and what you're going to do is if you rest your hand on here, the sensation you're going to feel, oh, you've got bare legs, you don't want that on your legs, so reach forward. Um, the sensation that she's going to feel is that you're looking at a liquid, but it feels dry because your finger is actually vaporizing the liquid as soon as you touch it. So you want to dip it in that quickly, but you'll see that you don't feel anything wet. Oh, that's you're slow. <laughs> <laughs> but did you feel what I mean? It's maybe this is a better way for you to just dip it real quick. Yeah. It is. It's strange. So again, the heat from your fingers vaporizes it that quickly. Thank you. <laughs> I won't pick on you twice in one show. So um, another way that I'll show you how cold it is is that everything that contacts LNG in the industry is required to be 9% nickel steel or stainless steel, if you will. This is regular carbon steel piping. So we have uh, many uh, thousands of miles of high pressure pipelines that use carbon steel. Normally it's pretty tough stuff. In fact, I'm going to change my jacket now. I have an anvil back here, and since I don't have enough safety glasses for all of you, I'll just hide it behind the counter. But what you'll see is that I can abuse the carbon steel, and it will sort of, uh, it'll maintain it, its integrity. I can bend it, but it won't shatter. So I can flatten it. It'll stay in one shape, maintain most of its integrity. If I subject it to embrittlement by cooling it at minus 160, you'll see why we use stainless steel to contain and process LNG. So the heat of that tube will actually draw that liquid up into it. It's called cryogenic pumping. I haven't figured out what to do with that yet, but I will at some point. You'll see why it's illegal to use carbon steel for LNG. It'll shatter every time. You can pass that around. Just hold it from the bottom. So let's, uh, let me show you a few of the, well, first we'll compare it with other common hydrocarbons. If you can look over here, please. Of course, propane and ethane are not a hydrocarbon, but LNG is minus 160. Um, if you've ever had a growth removed at your family physician, you know that the liquid nitrogen in his office is minus 195. So even as a cryogenic, it's not an extreme temperature. So let's talk about some of the myths versus facts. One is that LNG is more dangerous than other common hydrocarbons. And uh, we'd like to talk about something called flame propagation speed. And that is um, the speed in which flame can move through a flammable gas. So how many of you have an LPG or propane barbecue? Most of you. Um, you know, when they come new, they have the little igniter, you push the button, but that only lasts for about a week, and then you're throwing matches in. Um, my wife waits till I get home because she doesn't like that overpressure, and that overpressure explosion is actually that flame moving through that, that gaseous uh, flame front 
many hundreds of miles per hour. Methane gas, the reason we send it to your homes to use as natural gas, which is all LNG turns into when you vaporize it, it's just a phase change, there's no chemical change. It's between 12 and 20 miles per hour. Um, so what you'll see is that it's a relatively lazy hydrocarbon. Again, it's very bulky, which means that it doesn't have a, have a lot of oomph when you light it, like the other hydrocarbons you're used to using, gasoline and uh, propane and things like that. I can't get a permit to burn them in a convention hall, can't spill them on the carpet, can't light them in front of 80 people, but I can LNG because of its properties. Again, that's why we choose to make it sort of the interior fuel in your homes. So what you'll see is that I've, somewhere in here is five to 15% gas to air, which is the mixture that's required to light LNG. And uh, you'll see that I have to kind of look around for that five to 15% before it'll light. Somewhere in that, you're looking at the vapors that you see are often uh, like when you open your freezer on a very damp day, those are water vapors you're seeing. But when you light it, you see it'll stay a very lazy flame, complete absence of smoke. And it'll keep continue to burn this way until it was out of fuel. It doesn't increase, the thermal radiation doesn't increase the rate of evaporation or vaporization on the bottom. And then as with any natural gas flame, if you just remove the oxygen, it's out 